Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano video. And today I'm joined by Matt and Pyro from the Mehen team to talk about the fiat backed stablecoin that they're building for Cardano. It's something that really is needed in the ecosystem. So it's great to get some time to ask them what it's all about and I suppose clear up some stuff around fiat backed stablecoins, why we haven't seen them before and what it takes to actually bring one to the chain. So Matt, Pyro, very welcome to the channel. Great to have you on. Thank you, Paul. It's good to kind of finally get to have a chance to talk with you. Yeah. So look, we'll jump straight in. I'll let you guys give an introduction to yourselves first, and then we'll get into what the project is and where things are at now. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm Matt Plowman. I'm one of the founders of the Mihen team. i uh, been working in traditional finance for around 15 years. And in that whole time, I've been in, involved in like money markets and fiduciary asset management. So uh, my career has taken me from client onboarding, KYC sales through to credit research and portfolio management and um, always in the liquidity management area, always in the cash business. So the idea of you know tokenizing real world assets and having cash be the first real world asset that gets tokenized on Cardano is a very exciting thing. So uh, we, you know, we started a little while, a little over a year ago, um, thinking about this idea and going forward with the planning and execution of of how to launch a fiat backed stablecoin. There's a lot of moving pieces, but it's um it's been it's been a, a you know complicated and, and somewhat uh you know circuitous journey. But it's good to good to finally be to the point where we can actually you know point to stuff on chain and really start referencing you know actual documents and things that have that have come out. So we're excited to to finally have a conversation. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Um, yeah, as you know, uh, my name is Pyro, uh, community project manager over at Mehen. Um, so I'm right there on the socials. And, uh, you know, I do a lot of brand partnership conversations as well. And uh, I've been around in Cardano for about two years now plus, And uh, I've been doing blockchain since 20, uh, let's say 20, 2020, really, and uh, been learning on the way. And uh, really excited here to be a part of this project. There's so many great people. And uh, I've, uh, during my day job, um, I'm a, a therapist. And so I'm glad that I could uh, put on, uh, you know, the project management hat that I learned from there and kind of bridge it over to Mihen and uh, make everyone's, uh, you know, life a little bit better on, on both the behavioral side and then the, you know, and the marketing side. So I'm, I'm glad to be here. Nice. So if, they, if it's a bad day, then they can come to you to uh, calm them down again. <laughs> yeah. So we have touched on briefly what the project is. It's a fiat-backed stablecoin. But for people who wouldn't have heard of what a fiat-backed stablecoin is versus some people in Cardano might be familiar with Jed or something else and not our IUSD with Indigo. But what is a fiat-backed stablecoin that you guys are doing? Uh, yeah. So a couple of the, the more prominent fiat-backed stablecoins are, you know, USDC and USDT on Ethereum. There's the Gemini USD, and uh, there used to be, you know, BUSD from Binance. Uh, there's Paxos, Pax Dollar. There's a bunch of them that what they do is they take a dollar and they put it in a bank account, and then they issue tokens based on the value of that bank account. Sometimes if it grows bigger than what you can put in a bank account, they go and do like what USDC did, where they split it amongst a few banks. And they have a you know central portfolio of assets that's basically like treasuries and, and government debt that uh, that backs the stable coin. So what you can do is you can, if you wanted to come and can come and mint it or buy it, you could send a dollar or a number of dollars, and then you get the tokens directly from the company that way. And if you need to convert it back into cash, you can you know get the tokens from the ecosystem and then come and deliver them to me, and we convert them back to dollars for you. So it's kind of a, a fiat on and off ramp, if you will, into the Cardano ecosystem. And it's also, you know, backed one to one with U.S. dollars that you can receive out of the bank account, and and then get, uh, you know, get your value for that. So, ideally, on chain, it will trade for a dollar and be a good representation of value that can be, you know, not just only not just transferred and, and held, but also you know redeemed and, and receive your dollar, you know, in your bank account. So it could be a nice, nice payments instrument for people to go about the ecosystem and uh, you know and conduct conduct business, pay people. Using Cardano and uh, then have those people able to you know cash out and get the get the dollars instead of having to go from you know like a, like on a Jed example you'd have to go from dollars to ADA or Jed to ADA 
and then ADA to dollars uh, through a centralized exchange, you know, rather than taking those extra steps, you can just go directly one for one and get your dollar back or, or, or admit new ones for dollar if you want. Yeah, I suppose stable coins are really important for an ecosystem when you bring in trading. And as we see more and more assets being minted and protocols building on Cardano, there's more trading happening. But up to this point, we haven't really had much in the line of stable coins, at least in terms of liquidity and having enough there to really have big trading volumes. When you look at other, I suppose other chains, you look at Ethereum or Binance, then the most active trading pairs are generally always going to be against the stable coin because people don't always want to trade two volatile assets. And that would be like ADA or say yep. World Mobile Token or some other asset on Cardano. So where are you guys at now with the projects or how how is it coming along? Well, we've we've come up with a couple of different you know, if you can if you can think about it as like three or four different parallel workflows, you have the actual token creation. So we wanted to have a token that's not just a Cardano native token. So we we inter we uh, came up with an idea that actually started right around the time of uh, of uh, CNFTCon last year when we met up with Damon from Charlie Three and sat down with him for uh, discussions about how the Charlie Three Oracle could be helpful for verifying and printing the, the, the value of the reserve on chain. And that was an idea that we had early. And then recently we were able to um, come up with a way to use that Charlie three Oracle feed to actually manage the, uh, the value or the amount of, of token that's issued. So when you have uh, the way that the token is, is built is the token is there's a signing key pair. There's also a, a feed from Charlie three that every time you try to mint the token, uh, it will check against the Charlie three Oracle value and see if there's enough reserves to mint that number of tokens. And so we've deployed that, uh, that process on testnet. It's a bunch of smart contracts. It's not just one, but we've gone through and, and on pre prod, we went through the process of, you know, going through and, and taking the feed from Charlie three, there's about $500 in the bank account. So we minted $400 of USDM and that was a successful mint. And then we went and tried to mint another $100 of USDM or $200. And it failed. So that second failed kind of proved to us that yes, the Charlie three Oracle is indeed acting as intended where that limits how much token we can mint. Uh, the burning side, we're working on another process where you can only withdraw fiat from the bank account if it has a valid redeem transaction that's on chain and then kind of going the other direction from the chain to, uh, to the, to the wallet. So we want to make sure that the reserve is well preserved and the token issuance and burning is all very tightly linked. So that's, kind of the, the first thing that we started to, to build and it's been in process for you know, a very long time. And we've also been in touch with a number of different attorneys. We have a you know, couple law firms that we've spoken with about the, uh, the fiat side and the regulated side. So we actually talked with some of the attorneys. Um, the firm is called White Case. They are the attorneys that actually consult with the circle on USDC. And they confirmed to us that our process is going to be fine and that we we'll, won't have any issues with locking and, and minting of you know, lock, you know, token freezing clawbacks, lockups, the types of things that you see on Ethereum that is just a, a, a byproduct of the Ethereum ecosystem. So they they confirmed for us that our regulatory approach is is sound. Um, we've got a roadmap laid out for getting the regulators um, through the 50 states to get licenses, um, and then and then we've got another, another strategy for offshore. So folks who are outside of the U.S. can then also mint and burn, and um, so, so we've got the kind of the, the on-chain token, we've got the regulatory side, uh, and we have the then like the user experience off-chain code that folks are going to use to to come in and then link their bank account, send in dollars to to Mihen's reserve, and then if they want to you know, redeem, come link the bank account that the dollars go back into. So there's a bunch of kind of parallel processes uh, to, to just make the token work, and then out then outside of that you have to have another another kind of workflow that works with other other projects. So we've talked with all of the DEXs on, on Cardano. We've talked with a few of the projects that would use this as sort of a, you know, a piece of their protocol. And, you know, in each case we've had, uh, you know, good warm reception from all of them about what we're doing and that they're excited to have this fiat back stable coin, you know, live and going in the ecosystem, um, you know, very shortly, we hope. Okay. Uh, yeah, good to hear. There's a few, a few different bits. We'll go back on there. 
one thing that really caught my attention was what you said there about the Charlie 3 integration. And I talked to Damon, we done an interview probably three, four weeks ago now at this point, and we talked a bit about it. And that really stood out to me because anybody familiar with USDT or even USDC, more so USDT on other chains, there's all those questions over, is it backed? Is it fully backed? Do they have the reserves? And every so often it becomes a big deal and then it dies away again. But with what you guys are trying to do, anybody can actually check that. The Oracle will be, is the feed done, I think once a day, did he say? So after the bank closes, then you get the updated, this is what's in the account. So there is always that transparency and you can't mint more than actually sits in the, the account. So just on that, actually with the USD, the G take in, do you just leave it sitting in the account or do you use that for something else to try and earn on that? Or does it just sit in the bank? It would just sit in the bank. So there's an interest rate we earn on the bank and that's, it's not, it's not great, but mm -hmm. I think that what you need to do is you need to prioritize like operation of the stable coin, have, make sure that it all works together. I think that in time we will end up growing to be bigger than the bank can handle. Usually a bank doesn't want any one of its customers. You saw with, with USDC being such a big piece of, uh, of Silicon Valley Bank, when Silicon Valley Bank failed, that was actually a, one of their big concerns was that USDC might pull their reserve out, which would cause the bank then to have liquidity problems. So banks don't want anybody to get too big in their customer base, even though it seems like you know every day that they're asking for more deposits. Um, so once that happens, then we will go and we'll work with you know an asset manager that would help us in a fiduciary manner to manage the reserve to a very conservative standard that would be basically like AAA money market funds, government money funds, that type of thing. Okay. Um, yeah. Like I suppose running a project like this, as it gets bigger, there's going to be costs involved for the team. So if you were able to earn something on the USD that would support the project, that would be, would be good too. On the regulatory side, how have you found that? So we haven't had USDT or USDC. Some of the rumors are that you touch on it that on when they're on another chain, you can actually freeze them, that Circle could freeze USDC or basically take it away from you, where on Cardano, you can't do that because every asset sits in your wallet and it's the same as having ADA. No one else can pull it out. So how have you found that? Or is it only rumors that that is a requirement or... Um, well, actually there was a, a viral clip that went around recently that was actually Pyro here asking Charles, uh, why there's no USDC on Cardano and whether they were going oh, okay. to do anything about it. So it ten figure, or ten figure one was it? Yeah, he wanted they wanted what eight, eight, eight ten or figures. Eight figures. Um, yeah, tens of tens, tens of <clears throat> excuse me, tens of millions of dollars. So mm -hmm. yeah, they that that clip you know made its rounds again. That was from back I think in December that finally resurfaced um, thanks to social media. But I, I think it really comes from a misunderstanding of Cardano versus Ethereum. So Cardano people, and Cardano was really my first blockchain experience where I've, I've actually interacted with the chain and understood how the, 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 the tokens work. And the Cardano native token standard is fantastic. You have your tokens, they're actually in your wallet, they live there. Uh, kind of contrast that with the ERC-20 standard. And in an ERC-20 environment, there is a smart contract that has a list of token holders. And so it says, you know, Pyro has four and Paul has seven. And if Pyro wants to give to Paul, then the smart contract transfers some from Pyro to Paul. And in that interaction, Circle, USDC, Tether, USDT, they play a part in the transaction by signing that move. So the regulatory touch point is actually that, that Circle does it participate in every exchange of USDC. And if Circle were to participate in the exchange of USDC for sanctioned individuals, or if they were to identify a, a hack that was a, a theft of USDC, then they would be required kind of by law or by, by moral law that, uh, to actually lock that stuff up. And that's, you know, if they were to participate in the transfer of stolen tokens, then that would be kind of a crime that, that Circle is going to have to you know, answer for. And so their whole process is requires you to have a lot of control over it. Now in Cardano, it's different. You know, if, if Pyro wants to give Paul USDM, that's fine. 
that is not, man has nothing to do with that. And so it's that difference that allows us to, you know, confidently say that token locking and clawbacks and freezing accounts is not anything that we're concerned with. However, what we would be concerned with is if it turns out that Pyro sends money to some criminal organization who then comes to Meehan and says, can I have this money back into cash into fiat? They send us those proceeds. We would then freeze those kind of at our boundary. You know, we would be the boundary for onboarding and offboarding the USDM into the bank, into the bank account. So we will necessarily lock up criminal accounts. We'll lock up, you know, accounts. If we get court orders, folks will be prohibited from minting or burning USDM. And part of the USDM like onboarding and offboarding process is a KYC that's required for everybody that comes and interacts with the platform. And there'll be no, of course, no KYC to go through the DEXs and to go from peer to peer. But anytime you interact with Meehan, uh, you would have to, you know, go through the, that regulated process. So similarly, like every time you t transfer USDC, you interact with Circle Corp. And that's the difference between Ethereum and Cardano. And that's why I like the Cardano token standard so much better because it allows for a whole lot more freedom and a whole lot more autonomy for individuals to go about their day and not have to worry about some centralized entity controlling what they do. Yeah, I suppose with Cardano, you you actually own your tokens. They are your tokens. It isn't a third party that can decide whether someday you don't own them. I see the need, or not the need, the use case for it, that if there's hacks and stuff like that, that you want to freeze it. But there's there's plus and minus to, to both ways. The fact that you can control the actual on and off ramp is sure. It's good to hear that that's good enough in the, the legal side of things. And so getting in, you can go through the bank account. That would be through Yi as the main entity. So someone like me who holds USDT over on Ethereum, could I get USDM or would I have to take that out into fiat and then put it into Yi or will there be shortcuts essentially? There will be some shortcuts. The, the bank that we're using is actually a USDC member bank. So if you were to able to swap your USDT for USDC, you could send the USDC directly to Meehan and then there would be no waiting period. So typically when you send cash into a centralized exchange, there's a five day waiting period to withdraw that cash or to take it into a self custody wallet. And that's because in the US there's a regulation called Reg E where there's a clawback for five every five days, um, you can claw back transactions. And so the centralized exchange is understanding that if once the crypto is in your own self custody wallet, they can't do anything about it. And, and we would understand the exact same thing that we're not going to allow folks to mint USDM and get it into their self custody wallet until that fiat transaction reaches finality. So for USDC though, that's different. So you would be able to be participate in more, a more straightforward process where you could take the USDC, send it into a red, so it has to be from your registered Ethereum address, when you sign up, you'll register a Cardano wallet, you register an Ethereum wallet. And then if the USDC comes from that wallet, then it would be able to be transferred into the bank account and uh, credited to the bank account one for one. They, the bank charges us like a $15 fee for a USDC transaction. So we would have to take that out, but then you get the USDM on the other side, um, you know, on Cardano. So it's kind of like an Ethereum bridge a little bit from, USDC to USDM. Yeah, that's good to hear. It's as well. It's like a bridge, but way better than a bridge. We've seen the dangers of having a bridge before, and and you know hasn't heard of bridges. Basically, you can bring assets from one chain to the other. They're locked in a contract. Generally, they're locked in a contract on the chain you're moving off, and there's a new one minted on the chain you're going to. But then, if there is ever a hack and something happens, the chain that you've taken them from and them assets are gone, there's nothing to back up the one that you have on the new chain. So then it essentially becomes worthless. So I don't know if we lost. I don't know what happened. My camera just died. That's okay. Once we still have you there, anyway, that's fine. Um, so that would I have to KYC in that kind of case where I'm going with USDC over to uh, USDM? Yeah, you would. There would be a KYC process for everybody that mints USDM and everybody that burns USDM would have to have the same, you know, go through the same KYC. Yeah. Okay. And then and a big sorry, part of that is, is actually linking your bank account to, uh, you know, linking, linking uh, your bank account to the, to the Mehan account. So 
one of the one of the fraud concerns that we would have is say that you sign up UKYC yourself and you clear, but you end up linking a bank account that's actually somebody else's bank account, then we, we would want to make sure that the ownership of that bank account is actually the same as the person who's send, who's got the registered you know person on, on the profile. Yeah. So there are a bunch of checks that go through the, to make sure that everything's coming from a, from a good, clean source and that we know exactly what's happening. Yeah, and just in case people get worried about care, hearing a lot about KYC, if you're trading on a DEX, then you see you won't have to KYC. If the USDM is already in circulation on Cardano, you can trade that no problem. You won't need um, KYC. It's just like any other asset. Okay, all cameras are good again. And I was saying things about bridges there, maybe not such great things about bridges, but will we see USDM on other changes? other chains and would that be bridged or would they be native on other chains too? I think that we would like to launch native on other UTXO blockchains. So well, the process of, of, of doing the on-chain control, the minting and the, and the burning with the Oracle is something that we actually think is, is a very big improvement over what you see on other chains, but USDC being what it is, USDC the USDT are just kind of dominant on the EVM chains but they're non-existent in the UTXO space. So we would love to launch you know, native U USDM on other UTXO chains. And so I think Ergo is probably the prime candidate just because it's a friendly one with Cardano and it works in a similar manner. We've already looked at Ergo script and trying to take a look at porting those over. You know, of course it would have to be like a different, a different reserve for the other token. Um, we could do a, a few things with, you know, with, with helping with liquidity on the other chains, but, it's um yeah it's one of those things that we're looking at quite closely. Okay, and liquidity you mentioned there. How are you looking for initial liquidity, or what? What do you think? Like we had Jed launch, but in reality, now it's different reasons. There isn't enough liquidity there, but there's not enough incentives either. But with yourselves, how how are you looking at getting initial liquidity? Well, we have a couple of plans for initial liquidity. We'll have a liquidity bootstrapping event to you know, to accompany the launch. We have a few investors that are ready to mint some good volumes. Um, but I think that generally speaking, we hope that the community sees the value in this and then takes advantage of the opportunity to go and, and get the, the, the native stable coin. If you mint or burn the, you know, the coin yourself, you have the opportunity to take advantage of any kind of depegging. So if it should trade at 99 cents, you could easily go and, and buy it on the cent, buy it on the decks and then come to me hen and then get your dollar. You know, it's, that's, yeah. it's uh, well, it works. So uh, when you see it, that it's trading at a dollar one, dollar two, you go ahead and go and mint some and then send, put send that on off to the decks and get your free pennies. So that's the, uh, that's the on-chain stabilization mechanism for all fiat back stable coins. And it's just a matter of getting enough people to do it. So, you know, we hope that there'll be a lot of people that come in and, and mint. Yeah, um, and just a liquidity bootstrapping event for a stable coin. How would that work? Um, I know with other ones, it's you put in your ADA and then it's matched against the token from the protocol. But with a stable coin, how would that work? Well, that would be one of the things that we're we're looking at, trying to work with the DEXs on uh, getting enhanced yield incentives and then pairing it against other assets. So whether it be, you know, USDM ADA, USDM uh, JED, USDM IUSD. Those kinds of things, you know, sh you should see enhanced yield farming in, in some of the DEXs, and that would be one of those things that might bring a lot of capital into into the, the ecosystem. Okay, oh, so it's more about giving people reasons to mint USDM with their own fiat, not, I suppose, some people will be familiar with liquidity bootstrapping in Cardano, where a pro project comes in and they set up a pool where you can put ADA in for a week, and then at the end it's split, and that would be just to differentiate that for, for people. And the big question as well as you have something working on testnet with Charlie three and everything when mainnet, it's the question I know I'll be asked first after this stream. Of course. Uh, well, we're working right now on the user experience and the user interface. So the, the middleware, the kind of front end software that we host to do a KYC and to link the bank accounts and to, you know, link your wallet, those kinds of things that all of the SIP 30 integrations, all of the, um, the different ways to, to link your, your bank account. We've got 
a partnership with a company called Plaid that's very uh, big in the U.S. And they're starting to make inroads into Europe where they work with the banks to keep the uh, bank account information secure for the users. So Meehan won't see anybody's bank account information. Like that's the kind of thing. That's the part of the process we're working on now. We've got the on-chain stuff fairly well managed. And now we're working on, on getting the user experience done. We hope to be in user experience testing next month. And then it's going to be from there if we have any bugs to work out or if we have anything to fix. And then it will be sort of a, a licensing decision as to whether or not we're going to be able to launch in enough places for it to matter. And once we have enough approval on the licensing side, then we'll be able to launch mainnet. So we're looking at you know October, November, maybe, probably October. I've been keeping it uh, fall. <laughs> fall, yeah, fall. Yeah, fall. <laughs> Yeah, you, you don't want to commit to a month. You need to, a quarter. It gives you a little bit of room to to maneuver. Uh, yeah, that all, that all sounds good. And just on the regulatory side, um, in the US, you have to get individual licenses in every state, do you? Yeah. And would that be just for people in that state to mint it? Or if you don't get some states, could that stop you actually launching the protocol? Well, no. I think you know people traveled from different states it's a lot like what you see with with gambling. So if you have a, a license to operate a casino or an online gambling site in the US, you generally have that on a state by state basis. And so you have to be in that state to participate in that, you know, that, that, uh, that bookie. So you would then you know, go to if, you, if you're in New York, and we're licensed in New Jersey, you would then, you know, go to New Jersey and then do it in New Jersey, that kind of thing. So hopefully we'll get a critical number of states. We've we've got a strategy mapped out where there every state has its own process, but many of those processes are very similar. So you can go and kind of drop the same application in at half a dozen states at a time and get good results because it's a good application. So those are the kinds of things that we're we're working on with the lawyers. And we had a conversation just yesterday with them to detail that strategy and figure out how we're going to go and approach approach that side of it. Um, you know, we have, we have some, some good things that are working on and, uh, we're hoping that it will be a, a successful launch. Um, and then similarly outside of the U S we are setting up a British Virgin islands company that will get a BVI virtual asset service provider license. And that will give us, um, basically global coverage, except for some of the countries like North Korea. And that would be good for, for Europeans until MICA comes into effect be good for uh, you know most of the kind of latin america africa and asian countries there are a few exceptions but generally speaking i think the the bvi entity will be one that that's um it's a lot more like tether when it comes to its approach so depending on where you are a different entity will issue the tokens and that'll give us the ability to issue usdm to really anybody anywhere you know that's, that's good to hear. And would all that go into the same account or would you have to have one for US and one for the rest of the world? No, they'll go into the same account. Yeah. Okay. Um, look, thanks very much for your time. It's uh, great to see the progress that has been made and hopefully we will have a fiat-backed stablecoin on Cardano this year. Anything we haven't covered today that we should have or that could be important? Yeah. Um... I would like for you guys uh, to check out our Catalyst proposal. Um, we have one for, for Meehan and uh, the cost of licensing and everything, and uh, one for uh, uh, the KYC standard that Matt is helping uh, with a group of people, um, group of projects. And uh, uh, yeah, join our Discord and Twitter. We're very friendly people. Please reach out anytime. Uh, we'd love to ask any question that you guys have, um, and it's constantly expanding. So thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I'll definitely put links to them Catalyst proposals down below. Like we said a few times here, a fiat-backed stablecoin would be really big for Cardano. And to this point, I don't think you've done a raise in the community. So if you can get funds from Catalyst, then as far as I can see, it would be well-deserved. So you will, you will have my vote when it comes to Catalyst. Thanks, guys. I appreciate your time. And we, we should catch up maybe in two, three months' time, see where it's at. Two months' time would take us up to, what, October time frame? Yeah. We could see, be, see where things are really at. Nice. I think we, we could have a nice discussion about the test net, and then we could probably know a lot more about when at that point.
yeah that sounds great and i'll be covering it here on the channel any news items i'll be keeping up to date and putting them into my regular updates anyone watching thanks for watching guys i do appreciate it share it out let people know what is going on in cardano and with mehan the fiat back stable coin thanks for watching i'll talk to you soon thank you thank you paul thanks guys